Hello and welcome to this video where we take a teeny weeny Yoro Rack module that's just got vast potential for simple to advanced patching in a Yoro Rack system. It's the Zero 2 from DPW Design and I'll be using it with its partner in crime, the Switch. Let's check out what's to come in the video. Front, I'd like to thank DPW Design for sponsoring this video. Now Zero 2 is a 2 HP module that's just a set of 8 sockets. It's incredibly simple to look at. It's 3 inputs and an output on one channel and we get that 2 times over. So it's a 2 channel device. It's a comparator and a D-latch that work together to give us a pulse output depending on the conditions of the input. Now that might sound quite technical and it's got some history in analog computing and kind of backbone circuits that build things that we probably already use in our systems. We can build rectifiers, logic and type functions. We can add jitter to things, sync things. The potential's really vast. So although this is really simple, it's a really powerful addition to a modular system. There's a link in the description from Dan of DPW Design with a whiteboard and some circuit diagrams and a nice long explorations of the kind of inner workings of what's going on in this module. So looking at the controls, Zero Two and its partner in crime switch are relatively simple modules, but they really do open up a lot of advanced patching potential in a Yororak system. It's a two channel unit and we have A and B inputs, a D input and an output per channel. Inputs A and B are comparator inputs, where if A is higher than B, an internal comparator will go high. This moves up to look at and work with the D input, the data input, and the comparator and the D latch work together to give us an output that is a pulse at the output. The switch is a four channel bi-directional switch, where G and R, which stand for green and red, which is the status of these buttons when it's powered on, Green and red can be inputs, and we can choose between two inputs that route to an output. Or we can have an input that will route to two different destinations, a green and a red output, hence it's bi-directional. We can control the switching on these buttons, or via CV, and these are momentary by default, or we can latch channels one and two, or latch channels three and four separately. So simple as these look, we can really get into some advanced patching so the timing index is on screen. There's a lot of potential in the modules. So skip around as you like, and let's dive in. So this is a super fun patch to play with, but it's quite a simple one. I'll let you listen to this just raw in a second, but the patch is simply two sine waves, a lower pitch one and a higher pitched one. These are going into the A and the D inputs on zero. The pink trace or red trace there is this zero crossing output, so it's zero detection, click free switching. Those signs are also in channel one of my switch, and it's momentary switching or latching depending on setting that behavior. And the yellow trace there is the output. So if we listen to this just raw, now if I latch this switch, we'll get an octave lower. And you can see it's shifting to that higher wave less frequently. And then switches three and four are setting up my switching behavior for my sequence. Switch three will switch between passing nothing or a volt per octave sequence down to switch four. And then switch four is choosing where that goes. So as I choose to switch to a sequence, that's currently volt per octave sequence in the higher sine wave. 
If I switch four, that's switching the lower wave. And I can do that while also engaging this latching for the sub. So there's just so much to go at. Just sounds great for two sine waves. It's really kind of impressive patch that's not too bright, but just, yeah, girthy and glitchy in the low end. So in this patch, I'm looking at jitter generation. And this is a patch from the manual. And the idea is to take a clock and use something unsynced to add a kind of instability and jitter to it, which may sound undesirable. We tend to want things in sync and on the grid. But in this case, it's giving us a nice glitchy delay. So here's the delay, unlikely to add much jitter. Bit of feedback, and you can just hear this is kind of delaying away. Now go fully wet. Bit more feedback. I'm gonna slow this rate down, it's this expert sleeper's oscillator, and listen to what happens to this clocked delay. get these kind of little freak outs, jitters or instabilities or glitches, whatever you'd like to call it. And you can see that blue output there from zero. It's just missing lots of the clocks. And when something's as clean and hi-fi or quote sterile as beads may be in its hi-fi mode, it's nice to add these glitches and errors into these clock delays. So here I'm using these kind of quote jitter style patches in the manual and from this video to create this arcade trill type sound. It's got this nostalgic retro gaming type sound. It's one that I really like. It's really simple in terms of 0-2. It's two square waves from two different oscillators, one into the A input, one into the D input. Then the output I'm just adjusting in the AV1. So I'll open up the VCA, play around for a moment, and then we'll bend this into a kind of CMOS XR modulation type of ring mod sound. <laughs> So after opening the envelope there, I'm just adjusting the pitch of one of the oscillators. And again, it's another great tone. So losing my sequence, opening up my VCA. Let's just play around with the tuning without the sequence playing. Moving the A input. Of the fine tune. You can hear we get ring modulation type tones. Moving the oscillator that's into the D. It's just a super fun patch. So this patch is another really fun one and it's the yellow trace here that's doing all the modulation of everything that's going on in this patch other than the pitch sequence. Now my voices. have my waveforms which are two triangle waves they're going into switch i'm switching them with the signal generated by zero two again both lfos they're also going into the a and b we can really just look at this like a logic maximum if we kind of follow what's going on on the output it's kind of like a logic max function we can see this max voltage and it's a really nice way of mixing those lfos doing this kind of max function rather than actually just mixing them we can do this octave dividing with the latch and notice that it'll only go up to that faster rate one every second time. So here I'm using this jitter generation patch where we clock the D input and use an unsynced VCO or LFO, kind of anything really, into the A input to create instability and jitter. So completely disregarding zero, this is my beat. And it's those shuffled 16th note hi-hats that we're going to be playing with. You can just hear that just rolling along. And that's the yellow trace there. 
and the clock into the D input on zero. Now I have a triangle LFO, the rate of which I can control on AV1, just doing that so you can see me move it on screen. And that's going to create this instability, giving us the output from zero, which is the blue trace, which I'm going to switch to on my hi-hats. So we have a high rate LFO, that triangle there. It's likely things will line up and we can just treat this like a probability skipper or a logic and. If my clock is high and A is high, we can kind of think of it like that logic and. I'm totally treating this like a probability knob. As I bring down the rate of this triangle LFO going into A, things aren't quite lining up and I'm getting these little jitters or probability skips. So here we're going to look at switched halfway rectification with this really kind of ripping start sound that we make even nastier. Now I'll start with something much, much simpler than this and here's a sine wave just coming into the switch. I'm also splitting this into 0, 1, into B and this will analyse if B is higher than A in the comparator. So this will generate a pulse that is positive only when the input wave at B is positive. So if I then use that signal to switch to nothing in this switch, there's literally just nothing on this side, that's half wave rectification. We've lost half of the waveform. Now that's interesting for its tonal shaping and kind of overtones that generates in terms of audio, but if we start with a much more complex signal, such as the ones this wave folder can create. So same thing here, that sound is coming into the switch and zero one. Again, nothing on the other side. And if I use the signal that's generated from the comparator to switch, then I'll lose part of the signal. But what's interesting is, depending on which side I plug into, I'll get the positive part of the wave or the negative, something you can't do with a normal rectifier. But this got me thinking, what happens if we actually just listen to this output? What does this pulse sound like? And it's monstrous. Those little tears in the pulses. So let's put this in a more creative and musical context and put it in a patch. So just for a bit of history and backstory, this switching came from the MOG 4 band distortion. I'll link a demo to that in the description, but the on-off gate input actually does this zero switching. Zero detects the distortion waveform and the clean waveform, because it's switching the bypass or the distortion on and off. And it gives here a nice tremolo-like effect, but rather than cutting the volume in and out, it's switching from clean to distorted. And it's an interesting effect, and just a short little bit of history to throw in there from this product line. So here's a rather unique and I think great sounding stereo bass sound from Mutable Instruments Rings and a sine wave. And full credit to Dan from DPW as this is his patch idea that he just shared with me. And the patch is based around using two channels of a switch to switch between two sounds in opposing ways. So while well, the first channel of the switch has rings, the other channel will have the sine wave, and vice versa, they'll be flipping when they're switching between these sounds. We're taking advantage of zero two to analyze these two sounds, giving us a pulse when these are at zero crossings or equal powers in the waveform or equal levels, to give us this audio rate click-free switching that we've seen in the video so far. If we listen to the waves just as is, this is a sine wave. Notice I need to be on that red side and the green side to get the same in stereo left and right. 
And there we have rings. Again, posing LEDs opposing sides of the switch. So in the resting state, you can now hear these are in stereo. Rings to the left, sine wave to the right. I'm using the signal 02 gives me to analyze and give me this pulse. It's this yellow trace there on the scope. To switch both channels, it's been split so they switch together. And the output of the switch is in stereo, left and right. So this is now audio rate, click-free switching in stereo, as those inputs are both patched opposing ways. This hits a stereo VCA and an envelope just to shape the note, and you'd also have to trigger rings to get that moving and exciting to play a sound. And it's such a different sound for rings, and also just not a simple subtractive waveform. I think it's a really unique, interesting sound. So if you've got this far in the video, let me know in the comments what your favourite patch was. I'd be interesting to hear your patch ideas and how you might use something like this in your system too. And exclusively for my Patreon supporters, there's a couple of extended videos to come from this one building on these patches, and also a PDF booklet outlining that stereo rings base in more detail. Check out more DPW videos linked below, and I'll see you next time. Bye!